Hey Tackle Warehouse fans, Mike Iconelli here. You're in for another fun day of fishing. Listen to me, I'm going mobile today. Backpack, rods, and I'm fishing with one of the best guides on the upper Susquehanna River. We're north of Harrisburg. I'm fishing with Mike Breeding, and we have challenging conditions today. We had tons of rain dump on us three or four days ago, and this river came up. It's swollen, it's muddy, and here's the kicker. It's cold, 24 degrees this morning. So we're dealing with cold, muddy, swift current, but we're gonna try to figure them out. Come on, let's go. I'm taking a, taking a Berkeley hit worm. I'm biting it down so it's just a little bulbous tail. And I'm gonna thread that on this. This is a missile micro jig. So I'm just putting a little tail on it just to give it a little bulb in the back. I'll target these eddies. He didn't, he, you, you know, normally you feel, oh. Sign. That's a good sign. Look at that. Man, it's going to be a good day. Started the day, threw a, threw a dime in the river, saved the jet boat from flying away, got a bite on my first cast, got a bite on my second cast. This is a great sign. I want you to look at that. This is the worst smallmouth conditions you can fish in. Cold, muddy, high, rapid water. And this is the perfect bait. That's that new missile micro jig. It's a great imitator of crawfish, little minnows, a small bluegill, and look at that, right in his mouth. That's the 3 16 ounce, and I'm just using just a little Berkeley Maxent hit worm on the back, just to give it a little nub, a little trailer, and that thing's gonna move around in the current. Good start to the day, about a pound and a half fish. How pale that thing is too. Gonna let this thing go, get back in the water, see if we can get another bite. Crazy, two bites, two casts. Big fish, but that's not a smallmouth. If that's a smallmouth, that is a giant. It's not a smallmouth, it's something else, Mike. It's not fighting like a smallmouth. What else is it? Walleye? It's fighting like something else. It is a big smallmouth! Oh my God! Dude, a giant! A giant! Oh, so, oh God. Dude, I mean a giant, a real giant, dude. Look at that thing. Oh. Oh. I didn't think it was a smallmouth the way it was fighting. Look at the size of that thing. Oh my God. I got that sucker. Yeah! 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 Look at that thing. God, look at that. Solid, solid Susquehanna River smallmouth. Look at that. That's a good one, dude. That's solid. Look at the color of that. I don't know if you can see that. He's real light because of this high, dirty water that they've had up here. But he still has that, that, that brownish, almost orange tone to him. Look at the orange in that fish. And man, these fish are feeding on small minnows and they're feeding on a lot of crawfish and they're definitely in eddy areas. And when they're feeding low like this, they're, they're, they're in that eddy, they're compressed to the bottom. A small bait, a Ned rig, a drop shot, a tube. But I'm gonna tell you, this is a new bait. This is a, a brand new presentation. This is called a micro jig. A lot of these fish haven't seen this presentation. Best analogy to a micro jig, it's almost like a Ned rig on steroids because you have that skirt flare to it. But listen to me. A micro jig is not a jig you fish on a bait caster. This is a spinning rod bait. This is the 3 16 ounce. This is peanut butter and jelly color. And I'm just tipping it with a Berkeley Maxent hit worm. And I'm literally biting off just the back end of it to give it a little bulb. 
Man, look at that. God, what a pretty fish. Look at that thing. Yeah. Mike, this is unbelievable. First stop, two, two keepers and a bite. Unbelievable. We're gonna go back up and reset on the spot, but I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in the conditions of the river. Is that cool? Sure. All right. Mike, this, uh, we fished last year and, and we mentioned it. This is, in my opinion, one of the best smallmouth rivers, not just in the country, but in the world. I really do think it is. I mean, this is testament to how good it is. We've already caught a few, and these are less than ideal conditions right now. Uh, when I fished with you last year, dude, it was low, it was crystal clear. This looks like a whole new river. Tell me a little bit about what, what's going on, what's happening to the river right now. This is a whole other world compared to the conditions that we had to fish in last year. Last year we had low, cold, clear conditions uh, in wintertime conditions, which is typical for the Susquehanna. Yeah. Usually your lowest water levels are in the late fall. And uh, this year has been completely different than any year I've seen in my 20 years experience fishing this river. Yeah. We haven't had low water on this river since mid-June. Wow. It came up in mid-June and it hasn't went down yet to so-called normal pool. Right. And uh, this year has taught me a lot. It's taught me that fish don't go where they, where you think they are. They don't go where the books tell you they are. Right. Fish only go where they need to go. Right. And I've learned that this year. Yeah. I went to some typical wintering holes where I would go this year, yeah. and they're not there yet. Wow. And it's December. Yeah. They don't need to be. It's crazy. Now this this spot, this is, to me, just describe this because I want I want everybody watching to really kind of understand what's happening here. This river swollen. There's tons of current ripping, but something something cool happens right here. Tell me about this this spot. What we got here, Mike, is, is a shoreline eddy created by your upriver obstruction right there, which is a bunch of brush yeah. that is flooded and coming coming off of the bank. Yeah. The most important thing that we have here that is going to help us today is the color of this river. The, when the color is a little bit of stain, it helps you a lot. It helps right. anglers pre present their bait without the fish seeing it. Right. Also, what else is helping you right here is depth. And, and wintertime conditions for smallmouth bass, particularly river smallmouth, they look for four feet of water. Four if feet of water. If you find four feet of water yeah. and slow conditions created by an eddy, yeah. you're in the money. Wow. Definitely. Now, what's strange, Mike, is we'll fish 10 or 15 eddies today that'll look exactly like this, right. identical. Some of them will have a few fish in it. Some of them will probably be loaded up. Loaded, right. Why is that? It changes every year. Right. And I do believe that a lot of that has to do with a lot of sediment and a lot of gravel that gets flown into right. the river. Changing, the river's yes, changing. Yes, when it comes up and it floods in 15, 20 foot of water, some holes get better, some holes disappear. Right. They fill in. So each year it changes. River smallmouth start relating the current at 39 degrees. So as wow. the day goes on, we'll, we'll gain a degree of water temperature. Right. And they'll come out near the boat. They'll You're come kidding out. me. No. That's crazy. That cool, and they'll, they'll already start relating to Absolutely. current. Absolutely. That's, that's mind blowing. It's mind blowing, because I think a lot of people assume that you have to be in dead, dead water when it's cold, you know? Wintertime conditions, cold, dirty water, you gotta be in still pools, but none this is God. That would come off. That was a good one too. That was my fault. That was a little. That was a little. Uh, What's just as important as the water temperature today is what the water temperature was three days ago. For example, if this water was 34 degrees and it came up to 38 degrees, if they were humans, they would want to put shorts on. Wow. They would think it was springtime has arrived. That's crazy. If the water is 38 degrees now and it was 42 degrees three days ago, they're going to go in the calmest water that they can find. So when you're a smallmouth fisherman, I'm a bubble watcher. I watch the bubbles near my boat. Yeah. They're the fastest bubbles. Then I'll go to the feeding lanes inside. 
as you can see, the bubbles near the shoreline there are dead still. Yeah. That's what I look for when the water is under 38 degrees. Under 39 degrees if you really want to get technical. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, ooh, oh man, that's a good one. Decent one there. Go, look at that thing. Go, look at that thing. Look at that. It's unbelievable. What are we talking about? The water temperature, Mike? Th 38. 38.4. And they still have a fight in them like that. That's a current fish. Look at that thing. I got him. Look at that. There it goes. Killer combination. One of the things I love about this micro jig, it's that missile micro jig. I want you to look at the head shape. It's what I call an aspirin style head, shaped like an aspirin. And it's got a 90 degree line tie. And one of the key things about that 90 degree line tie is it keeps the bait upright, keeps the bait straight, but it keeps the bait out of snags. The upper Susquehanna is one of the most rocky, snaggy rivers around, and that thing's coming through clean, and that's real important to catching those things. That's a real good one. Damn, that's a nice one, Mike. That ain't bad, is it? That's a good one. Wow. Hell yeah. That's a good one, dude. That's a good one, bro. I would say that's an average size fish here. That's a good one. Maybe man. just a little bit below average. That's a good one in anybody's book. I don't care who you are. I'll catch them things on two and a half, so I'll catch them all day and, and not ask any questions. I just like the tick, Mike. <laughs> I sit here and I sit there and wait for that tick. And that come out a little bit. Yeah, he did. He'll, and they'll, they'll gradually come out, especially with a little sunlight on the stuff. <laughs> oh my God, that's a toad! Look at that one. Wow. I like to go under the boat. Dude, that is a biggin. That's a biggin, biggin. Three pounder all day long. <laughs> It in. Wow. Man, that is pretty. Tail rider. Three pounder all day long. Man, Ooh, both, those, both those last two come out a little bit. Yeah. That's a babe calling that shot. Right? Oh. Oh, I'm surprised you ain't calling this one. Oh. Oh. Look at that. Oh, God, he tried jumping. Look at that thing. It's cold fish. Yeah. Cannot believe they fight like this in this cold water. It shows you how mean they are, you know? It's crazy. I got it. Look at that. Look at that thing right there. Man, this bait is unbelievable. You know, in this current, a drop shot, a Ned, a tube, all those are working and will work. But this thing's special, man. This thing comes through cover great, definitely elicits a little better bite. And the great thing about that micro jig is you can fish a lot of different trailers with it. I've got the Berkeley hit worm cut down on there now but you can fish little, little crawls, um, you can fish small creature baits, little chunks. So you have a lot of options with trailers. My rule of thumb on the micro jig is the colder the water, the more neutral I want that trailer. So look at that, there's no real action there, it's just a little nub. As the water warms, I want more action and I start going to curl tail grubs, a little Berkeley power grub, something with more action. So the colder the water, the more neutral the action of the trailer, the warmer the water, the more action you want, the more motion you want on the back of that little missile micro jig.
There's a normal size hit worm. And I basically take that, take a scissors or bite it down. And uh, I like to have it maybe about an inch hanging off the back of this. So just keep biting it down. And I thread it on the back of this missile micro jig. I want you to see it. it's got a 360 degree keeper on it. So it does a real good job of holding this plastic on there. You get it over that keeper, and once it's on there, it really holds it on there good, and that's all I want. I just want that little bulb hanging off the back of that micro jig. Exactly, exactly kind of bite this micro jig will get under tough conditions. Look at that thing. Look at that, it's down his throat. Look at that, look at that micro jig in his mouth. This thing is, it's got a super sharp hook on this thing and it's, it's a fine gauge hook. So you never really jack them. You almost set the hook on these fish like you would a drop shot or a Ned rig. You just, you just apply the pressure. That hook is so sharp and fine. Look at that little thing. It's a perfect finesse hook on that micro jig. But because of that hook, I want to stress to you guys, this is not a bait caster jig. This is a spinning rod jig. It comes in a 16th, an 8th, and a 3 16 So this is a spinning rod bait. And this is key to it right here. You want to pick the right rod and reel. I'm using a 7 foot medium action Abu Garcia Ike series. I'm pairing that with an Abu Garcia Revo in the 20 size, a perfect size reel. And then the combination that I like to fish this bait, you're gonna see it right here. It's braid to a floor leader. And I'm doing that because I can make longer cast. That braid is gonna let me feel every little bump on the bottom. And it's really positive hook sets. When you set that hook, you're just reeling back. There's no stretch. So I'm using 10 pound. It's the new X5 braid by Berkeley, and I'm going to an eight pound Berkeley Trilene, 100% fluorocarbon leader. And not a long leader, I'm only using about, what was that, about two or three feet of fluorocarbon. That's the perfect combination for that little micro jig. Big black spot? Look at that big black spot on him. He's tattooed. He's like me. It's like a full back piece, just like me. Wow, look at that. Look how cool that is. His fins actually. Look at that. Whoa! Look at that. So cool. The back of his his fin has got a little black, but look at how pronounced. That dark spot is. It's like a beauty mark. Wow. Super dope. Listen to me. Cold, muddy water, uh, heavy current. Look for eddies. Fish a bait on the bottom. Fish a bait on the bottom. Look at this. Look at this. Another nice smallmouth. Look at this. Fish a bait on the bottom, a tube, a Ned Rig, a drop shot, but man, try that little micro jig with a subtle trailer, and it's going to change your day when it's this cold. <laughs> oh, this never gets old, man. That's a good one, too. Look at that. It just, just never gets old. Oh, my gosh. Listen, man, I hope you learned something today. You can catch bass in cold, muddy water. Um, finesse lures, tubes, neds, but especially that micro jig. Try it. I guarantee you're going to have some success. I want you to like, share, and tag a friend for a chance to win some of this gear that we use today. 
I hope you had fun. Stay tuned because next week we're back for more cold, dirty water, smallmouth fishing.